Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, round number 7 of Bazaar of Vox in Strasbourg is upon us. Format's modern of course, and we've got the modern master Patrick Dickman sitting to my right. My name's Riley, we'll be your steady hand guiding the teller as we head down to table number 1 of our feature match area to get stuck in to round number 7. I know in the feature match area we've got uh, a few players who've been doing, obviously doing very well this mm -hmm. tournament as well, but just not not just in this tournament, Patrick Dickman. Mm -hmm. I'm on Dossimo, a GP champion, is sitting on our backup table. We'll be checking in with the Belgian a bit later on, I imagine. But right now it's uh, Jocelyne Guillon and Elie Générat. Mm -hmm. so I think I absolutely nailed the pronunciation <laughs> of those absolutely. names. Absolutely. And I think you've seen Jocelyne last, uh, last round. I think it was on Nahiri, if I'm not mistaken. Like Jessica Nahiri. Already said today. It's good to see yeah. the uh, Jesco decks up at the top tables again mm -hmm. after, a, I would say, a year or so at least in the uh, outside the spotlight. Really, we haven't seen many lightning helixes uh, yeah, being thrown right. around throughout the last twelve months of modern. Well, I, I mean, there was a short period of time where um, when Naya Burn, like um, Naya Zoo, was very popular. Okay, maybe we've seen them there. With the and mm. um, uh, Gomez guys, Monastery Swift here, and so on and so forth. But they've they've not been playing the full set of helixes. Like maybe they're two. Uh, the four damage burn spells and the chakra command, the yeah, forest charm, and um, and certainly not in uh, in a Jesco shell. Anyway, yeah. I mean, I remember the days of uh, Jerry Thompson mm -hmm. pioneering a lot of some some very interesting. Yeah. He had these huge big lists of one of spells that you dig <laughs> through with yeah. with cards that uh, you know with, with your Sphinx's revelations and whatever else while you're uh, trying to you know beat down. I think it was just snapcasters and bolts and celestial colonnades, yeah. but uh, we haven't seen it recently. So it's good to yeah. see a new spin on the archetype at the top of the tables. Mm, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it, it did not turn out too well for the Naya midrange deck, though. Like, uh, he, he could not find a way to like um, beat beat Dreska in time before Emrak would arrive on the field. Mm. And um, I mean, I, I did not quite get to see enough magic to like uh, form an opinion yet, but I, I, w I wasn't super impressed because it was just after, after all, it was just a bunch of like mediocre guys. Yeah. I mean, voice was pretty good, but there like there were no large creatures. And a few like removal spells, and usually that's just not quite good enough in modern. It's just not not like not fast enough, yeah. but also not broken enough. There's, yeah, it's got to be doing something. It's either you've got to you've got to pick a real extreme, but you got to be really really fair yeah. or doing something completely busted. And yeah. uh, we're uh, well. I mean, actually, if you want to look at it in, in this way, this uh, this Jeskai deck is doing a little bit of both. It's mm -hmm. playing a very fair game of control magic yeah. essentially, and then it's got this huge unfair yeah, finisher. Ab absolutely. Yeah. But, um, I was about to say that. I mean, Trudeline, he was, he, he might have been playing Kiki Jiki mm. uh, as his way to like um, end the game on the spot. But it's, it's not that easy to protect Kiki Jiki as a two-two. And it's also a two-card combo, and Nahiri is just an engine by itself. Yeah, and and the other thing about the uh, you know this Nahiri engine is you look at uh, you look at something like uh, Kiki Jiki, for example, where on its own. I mean, this is this is the thing with Splinter Twin as well. Mm -hmm. Splinter Twin meant that you put cards like uh, you know Pestamide or the uh, or the Exarch in your deck. That by themselves, I mean, pretty embarrassing. Not doing a whole mm -hmm. lot really. I mean, obviously winning the game on the spot in the right place, but. The Nahiri, Nahiri the Harbinger is is a, a, a solidly defensible mm -hmm. magic card even without the, yeah. the the combo at the end. I mean, I've been I've been beating down with Festimites a lot to be fair, but uh, yeah, of course by themselves they're not that great. Like if they are in the right shell, um, like with a lot of blue tempo cards like Riman and Snapcaster Matrix, they they become a little better because yeah. then you can um, like grind some value out of like tapping your opponent's lands. And uh, there was a little, little more to it than that, than just that. But yeah, they, they are not, not, a, not, a, not impressive creatures when it comes to modern standards. So Genera here playing Affinity, yep, sequencing this uh, nicely, playing around Gutshot because he played the Moxapa first, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so we know that he's going to have free mana available at his, uh, in his next turn, most likely. Uh, if he does have the second hand, but and it I'm looks like Huilon also is putting himself in this position here with the Birds yeah. of Paradise. Um, if Eli does not have a play here, I'm, I'm not sure if it's correct whether like to, to play the Moxapal. I guess yes, yeah, if you don't want want to have it discarded, but that way like you can have it right right away for mana anyway. Mm. So you might also like, consider keeping it to surprise your opponent with like uh, with free mana on turn two. In comes the Vault Scourge. Get Jocelyn here for one. See that goes up to 19. It's going, probably going to be Edge Champion or two drop plus one drop here. 
Steel Odyssey is a good one. Steel Odyssey. Oh, so this Mox Opal is just doing absolutely yeah. stone cold nothing here. Yep. Yeah. It is online, obviously. I mean, you mm -hmm. you can see that it's uh, the Dark Steel Citadel has put it online even last turn, but uh, no, no use from it so far. And let's hope for Drizzle in sake that he does have one of his um, lightning helixes. And uh, it was not, uh, he, he, he was in the feature match area last last round already, and these players are at 50 points, so yeah, he, he lost against, he just lost against Jessica, I believe. Or maybe I'm just mistaken, like, there was definitely a Drizzeline in uh, in last round, uh, in, in the feature match area last round, but yeah. maybe it was maybe a different, different, different yeah. Jessaline now, well, there we go, that could, be the, that could be the case. Wall of Roots as well is going to power up your Jessaline's uh, mana here, and we see a voice of resurgence entering the fray as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a it's a nice one against many of the blue decks in the yeah, format. Against Infinity, not yeah, uh, against Infinity, not so much. Like I mean, what's, what Voice of Research is not going to do anything by itself. Uh, but like most of the creatures in Infinity, they have they have evasion mm. and attacking for two is also not 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 that impressive. And I mean, any activation that you get out of out of your steel obviously is just so valuable. But actually, this one is one that is not so not so good because there's just two creatures on the battlefield right only now. two creatures here <laughs> i mean obviously yeah as you say any activation is is generally a good it's activation a but this one here oh and here's a cranial plating okay so now we're going to see uh, things really heat up so counting up the artifacts looks like there are six is it six is it, i think it's five isn't it it's just a five, yeah. yeah. So, so glimmer post and mountain, the other lands there. Yeah. So it's seven damage in total. Seven two lifelink and not too, not, not such a bad att yeah. attack here. And this is why we see Volscourge, such an unassuming creature, being so hugely powerful mm -hmm. in these uh, situations because of things like Arcbound Ravager, yeah. because of Cranial Plating, oh. the lifelink uh, combines so well with the pump that uh, these other cards provide. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean. There is some ma matchups where Wolf's good is uh, like really good, of course, like any matchup where you're racing. Yeah. And there's some where, where it's just a 1-1 one, one, uh, for, for 2 mana, or like 1 mana and 2 life. But it's always a double-edged sword too. Like if you're playing against Burn, and you drop that Wolf's good on turn 1, mm. they have the Searing Blaze or the Lightning Bolt, you just pay two, uh, 2 life for free. And that, yeah. uh, that's a bad feeling, especially if they have the Searing Blaze. That's a good point. I mean, often you will recoup that uh, advantage or that, that life loss, uh, you know, with a couple of attacks, but sometimes, yeah, it can be a bit of a liability. Here we see uh, Jocelyn attacking for three with the Voice of Resurgence, but Eli is so far ahead in the race here with yeah, uh, so. 23 life, and, and, and this is this is why we play uh, Volt Scourge in, mm -hmm. in Affinity, for, in situations like this. Yeah, I mean, it's also kind of unlucky for Joseline that he's drawn four, um, four acceleration creatures mm. with, with nothing to like accelerate into. Like, um, I don't know about his last two cards, but they don't seem to be um, too exciting. Or maybe it's just Restoration Angel and he just goes for Block with Birds, Birds of Paradise and play Restoration Angel. That would probably be his best best option. Well, we're going to see a Block with the Birds. Uh, but they're counting the artifacts so, artifacts, so I don't think that he has a Restoration Angel. Nope. No, so that's still uh, still on the front foot here for Eli. That's uh, another big attack. I saw that Ink Moth, uh, sorry, the Blink Moth Nexus mm -hmm. get activated, but no attack with it there. I wonder what, what, what is Eli holding? Maybe additional copies of Mox Opal? Because I don't think that it is Galvanic Blast, because then he probably would have killed the turn one um, Birds of Paradise. Uh -huh. Yeah, that Mox Opal has just sat there again. Uh, Generator was both both players really not short on mana. Yeah. As we see, Jocelyn now is fetching out a stomping ground, but uh, on his side of the table, as you said, four accelerant mm -hmm. creatures, and, and this is what will happen sometimes. You know, when you're playing four to eight to, to twelve yeah. mana creatures well, here. Usually, you... usually the go-to number is nine between nine and ten. Yeah. Like usually uh, the set of birds and three to four uh, noble hierarchs and two wall of roots, but it depends. Like. Just, just a, go, just a, a rule that like most people just go with. Jocelyn here now. There's another land. It's four mana now, and here is Nahiri. Nahiri. So we've seen Nahiri in the Jesco shells recently, and uh, now we're seeing her in uh, in Naya as well. Mm -hmm. And three more mana. Uh, that is oh, and it's a blood moon. Blood moon. Wow, he's complete. Like he's completely shot off. Um, uh, Illy's attacks because uh, Blink Moth Nexus cannot be activated anymore. Yeah. I was about to say that there's still the Ink Moth Nexus to worry about, but 
Yeah, it is now it's just a mountain with a plus one, plus one counter. <laughs> yeah, he's still in need of another flying creature. So this Steel Overseer is going to be able to get in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Yosselin here has, has yeah, blockers for yeah, he, days. He has blockers and for days. And he's just going to upgrade his voice, uh, his voice of Resurgence into a 4-4 token. And the other thing here is as well, as soon as this uh, as soon as this Steel Overseer becomes activated again, Nahiri, I mean, you're happy to just trade mm -hmm. off your Nahiri for another creature here. Is there another Void Scourge? No, it's Sigma Pest. It's, Signal also, Pest. it's also representing ev uh, evasion. All right. And this is uh, this is a little bit of a top deck battle now. I think Joseline will have two turns, but he has Nahiri to activate. So, so we see yes, the the Volt Scourge going onto the Signal Pest, and Jinarad here is going to be able to activate that uh, that Steel Overseer, but he's going to have to do it in the end step here. Yeah. Joseline as well as yeah, as you mentioned, getting mm -hmm. two cards, getting two cards to see uh, which one he prefers here, thanks to Nahiri. Didn't like the Arid Mesa, had a second crack at it. Yeah, and I mean, now he, like, if Signal Pass has to attack next turn, he has two more flying blockers, okay. and he also gets to exile the Signal Pass um, so, in, his, in his next turn. So now we're seeing the uh, the, the walls really go up, and I think uh, Jocelyn is all in on this uh, on this Nahiri here. Mm -hmm. I think that, that was another Blink Moth Nexus being drawn, which is just a mountain. Just a mountain here for uh, Ile. So really impressive stuff of Jocelyn, able to uh, stabilize after yeah. a pretty brutal assault to, yeah. to begin with with that Volt Scourge. Up goes uh, uh, the Harbinger again, and we see a Noble Hierarch discarded. Didn't get a look at what uh, Jocelyn drew after that. Yeah, he's been playing pretty fast, and we saw that Illy decided not to not to just sacrifice his uh, Signal Pass yet, and I think he just forgot yeah, to... Didn't uh, activate the yeah. Steel Overseer yeah. there. Oh, that's brutal. Man, this is the sort of stuff you got to stay on top of this because, uh, you know, even though you're not attacking, even though you're sitting mm. there, you can still get to a position where your board becomes insurmountable eventually. Here's an Arcbound Ravager. I think we, I think there's going to be Emrakul coming, uh, coming down in two yeah. turns with, uh, with nothing that Eddie can do against it. Yeah, this is tricky stuff now for the Affinity player. You know, often the uh, Affin the Affinity deck it can it can play a, la a longer game, but mm -hmm. not not as well some of the other decks in the format and especially not as well with uh, as decks as with uh, Nihiri. Yep. Yeah, I was assuming there's at least one additional copy of Mox Apple and there it is. And so we saw it too. And it might even be two additional copies yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, look at oh, that. Yeah, so it, was, it was all Mox Apples. Just like you drew it up. Dr. Modern's sitting next to me here. You see, oh no, you diagnosed the problem. Got the stethoscope out. You knew I, I was mean, going. It wasn't, it wasn't that tough because you would be playing anything else. Yeah. And I mean, there's only so many lands in the... In the... Um, uh, in the affinity in the list, decks. what do they play? Like sixteen? Sorry, sixteen? Uh, yeah, that depends. It's between sixteen and seventeen. Yeah. Like if you're playing four copies of Darkseid Dark Citadel, four copies of each of the um, Nexi, so that's twelve. Uh, four Glimmerwoods, and usually one basic. Uh, and one basic, so that's seventeen. But I've have also seen people do uh, three Glimmerwoods and one basic. <laughs> one basic as but well. Personally, I'd prefer seventeen lands. Another voice of resurgence here for Jocelyn after having a uh, his blood moon obviously not affecting the, the mountain or the plains that he has there and I think uh, Eli again didn't activate the, the steel, steel overseer. overseer yeah maybe <laughs> he, might, he might have given up on this game already because honestly I, I don't see him win this anymore I mean the writing was on the wall, on the wall for two turns well it's but champions there's a card yeah. that um, would have changed the, the math entirely yeah. if he had uh, drawn it a turn earlier because now there's probably Emrakul coming, and he won't he, he won't have enough permanence to um, to survive here. No, is uh, well, I mean, I guess he has a lot of permanence actually. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure this out myself. So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven permanence. And I mean, it was really bad for him that he did not activate that steel of twice because yeah. he, he could have put even more counters on the Archon Ravager, keep free artifacts, and make his edge champion big enough to just, uh, yeah, attack unblockable due to protection to all colors. Yeah, that is unfortunate here. That's the way that uh, things have panned out here for Eli Generat. Jocelyn, on the other hand, on nine here, with a Nahiri ultimate trigger 
can activate the ultimate if uh, if he so chooses. It only costs eight loyalty. Maybe he so also just sees, maybe he also sees that um, getting Emrakul is actually not enough. I mean, <laughs> Elise is thirty two light because mm. of, because take, of uh, <laughs> take um, two attacks or three attacks. Yeah, yeah. because of Volt's good and um, Nahiri, Nahiri will be off the table. And I mean, he still has the option to build a, uh, to build um, to build up um, an edge champion that's gonna win in two turns. I think it might he might be able to have an edge champion that wins in one turn. So Probably pull not. the trigger, and here he, the ultimate is activated. And 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 here is you know something we see about Nahiri the Harbinger. It is not hard to get to the ultimate. No. This was after a, a down tick as yep. well. Yeah, the plus two on Nahiri is really powerful. She just uh, what is that? Oh, geez. Okay, this is <laughs> this is not a this is not a. Uh, an Emrakul? This, is, this isn't an Ember Swallower, no. What is this card? I have no idea myself right now. It's in a new, it's in a new border, so uh, it, it can't be too, too old. It's red, it's got an, an ability at the bottom. Jeez, and if the, and unless the language is tricky, it's a... Uh... Oh, it's Pia it's, it's and Kira and Alar. I was about to say, it's a promo ah. Kira and Pia and Kira and Alar. There we yeah. go. Okay, a Pia and Kira and Alar. I haven't seen that art before. No, me neither. Like, I'm, a... <laughs> okay. I'm really bad with all the promos. Like, usually I know the pictures for... There it is. Yeah. Okay. What's that one? Oh, that's the... It was an intro pack rare. Yeah, okay. I was about to say, I think it was an intro pack, something like that, yeah. Oh, wow, there you go. You can see there. <laughs> Look at them there. Action stations. It's <laughs> not... Not that lovey-dovey picture that we see in the uh, in the original art. These well, these think, guys are here to rumble. I think this is also a nice picture, but I've just never seen no. it before. I was, I was very confused for a you moment. You don't spend a lot of time playing with the intro pack. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, surprising. Surprising. So there we go. We do have... It is the dead parents. That was a pretty good draw. And three... Well, no, that was that was searched up by the, uh, the Nahiri, and now we're going to see an Eternal Witness returning yeah. uh, Nahiri. Nice. And play it again. How about that? Play it again, yeah. Sam. Bring it out. That was pretty pretty good. I gotta say, I I, I like that because um, like I, I thought like um, I thought that there's not much to get him out of this hole, but um, yeah, Pierre and Kieran do it. Yeah, because they got to, they get to block the edge champion for two turns, and two turns is exactly enough to have another another uh, <laughs> another um, another yeah. another Nahiri. I mean, and I mean, surely that Nidek is playing every. Yeah, I you think would so. think. Yeah, I would think. Because so. we see some of these Mardu decks that just play, you know, like an Obsidat or something, mm -hmm. for example. But uh, yeah. I think, I, I think just like having having the option to get Emrakul win on the spot, that's just too good. And so going... now the the Pia and Kira needs to return to the hand of Jocelyn yeah, at but, the end of turn. But I think he's quite happy with that because yeah. he's, he gets to replay it, recast and, it, and uh, get a couple more thoughts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's probably a little bit of an upside here in this case, which is not usually the case. Yeah. And hopefully so Eli finally remembers oh, his trigger. Oh, here Let's we go. Eli again. remembers to activate the Edge Champion yeah. this time. There we go. We see the uh, Arcbound Ravager going up to four now, thanks to those uh, Mox Opals that uh, it, it jumped up. It looks like Joseline yeah. may have forgotten to pick up uh, the Pia and Kieran Nalar there to the, uh, to to the, the Nahiri. Nahiri. Yeah. So we might have to get him. We might have to, you know, a little bit of a reminder to pick that one up yeah. there, because that needs to be in the hand. I think that's what it says on the on the yeah, card. It doesn't yeah, get to, doesn't get to stick not, around on the battlefield. No, it does not. Like uh, the ultimate says, search your library for a creature card, put it into play. It gains haste at the end of your turn. Return that creature to your hand. Yeah. Here's another flying attacker. So I guess that's another reason that Emrakul wouldn't have been enough there. You attack, let them uh, let them sacrifice six permanents, whatever else, and then they have to bounce mm -hmm. the you have to bounce the Emrakul. And I mean, he's getting close to casting it. So here is uh, there is Nahiri, and just as uh, as Patrick Dickman said. Yeah. You can search for an artifact as well. Oh, I'm go. sorry. I've, I've, oh, never, I've never seen anyone search for an artifact. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Edge Champion is going to eat up an, a Thopter token, and we're going to see, try to stop the uh, the game just before this goes any further. It hasn't changed anything yet that the uh, PM Kira should be in the hand. I think I definitely would have attacked the Sigma Pass in this spot. So you can see the arm of Jeremy Dazani there, pointing to the uh, Pia and Kira. Should be in the hand of uh, yeah. Jocelyn there, of course. After having searched, been searched with the uh, the Nahiri. Or, well, I mean, maybe he got something else. But even if he got no, he got the Nahiri. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. also think he, that sorry, he got, he got the. Yeah, he got the I, I, was, I was about to say, if I remember that correctly. Okay. So return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step, which is what he did. Well, 
little bit of a delay there, mm -hmm. but didn't affect anything, so we can move on as planned. And I mean, I guess Drizzly is actually pretty happy that he gets the return of his hand. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, that's right. I think, <laughs> I think he, he actually uh, forgot it. Like, I just think, forgot it. You think he definitely would have preferred to, be to do that? To have it in his hand. More blockers. Up goes Nahiri. We're going to discard a uh, Voice of Resurgence, draw a fresh card off the top. And I'm really not, not, not quite sure why he did not attack with his signal fast in this spot, though. Like, it is lethal by itself, and I think that is Kozali Pride Mage. That is Kozali Pride Mage. We can see a voice get in there again. Now for four. Mm -hmm. Generate with a lot of life to uh, to go around here, but he's just going to take it. Obviously, there could you know very yeah. could very easily be a block to yeah. kill it, but I don't think he wants uh, to no, unleash really. the beast within here. No, probably not. And I mean, uh, Jotelin also has the option to just replay. No, he, I think he doesn't have enough mana. I was about to say that he has the option to replay Pia and Kira and yeah, just kill something else. Yeah, absolutely. He's just floated the mana for it. I think yeah. he's considering whether he wants to do it. Yeah. No, uh, but uh, he could have sacked uh, a fob uh, oh. if he has one additional mana, to, like finish something off. Oh, I see. That's off the table. I mean, Kozali Prime is still a pretty decent draw here. Like, mm -hmm. just just two mana indicate pretty much, or three mana if you have to pay one. You have so, to pay the yeah. one, but in, in, in install, I've, in, yeah. I've indicated on install. Indicated is still quite play. decent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, two easy payments. Yeah. Here is the uh, Pia and Kira and Alar once again. We're going to go up to three Thopters this time. One obviously blocking the Edge mm -hmm. Champion before, and that's uh, that's really been a deciding factor here in uh, in keeping uh, that Edge Champion from getting from punching through. Yeah, absolutely. And because it could very easily be a, a lethal attacker, and, and look at that once again, Nahiri the Harbinger on eight loyalty. Yeah. Oh, and of course, uh, I, I am. I, I, <laughs> you're getting I, more excited. I, I, about I, I, I was getting more excited about the steel obviously being activated. <laughs> oh, geez, it's not something you see very often. Yeah, that's right. Not something you see very often. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think there is another Nahiri an ultimate uh, incoming, and um, I probably would have attacked with Signal Pass last turn. Mm. Like, I mean, you you have to like shrink down that flying army over there somehow. Yeah, the 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 Birds of Paradise is still hanging out in the mm -hmm. air there. You can see uh, Jocelyn has a. An impossibly dense board state here yeah. with uh, mana dorks all over the place, and you know, there's an even eternal witness hanging out in there somewhere. Kasali Pride Mage, but all of Naya's best, really. Yeah, and now um, Eli has to be really worried about just dying next turn. Like, if, if Emrakul is coming out, I mean, uh, this is going to be like together with all the pop the tokens and the Pia and Kiran Nala, it's yeah. going to be enough damage to just win the game. Yeah, those Pia, those uh, Thopter tokens represent well, geez, yeah six damage by themselves mm -hmm. or so, and then nine if they attack as well so now we do see the attack with the signal pest yeah but now I also would have attacked with the war good <laughs> <laughs> like any eva I mean, evasive creature is good enough right like I, I would I would have attacked with um, all my evasion creatures all the time like well, I, I also would not have held back my um, signal pest um, about Five or six turns ago, yeah. when uh, when Nahir was at four counters, like I would have just gone with it. So another steal overseer here, but yeah, I think that's a a good point, especially given that the uh, the cranial plating put on that uh, vault yeah. skirt would would further buffer Generous mm -hmm. life total, which is under siege at the moment and getting closer to uh, you know being taken down by an Emrakul here. Yeah, I mean, um, for Quasali Fridepatch probably would have taken care of the vault skirt. Uh, if mm. he had attacked, and I think I still would have killed the the Volt Scourge, but he might now, this even... is assuming there's an Emrakul in the deck. Mm -hmm. We are this this yeah. is an assumption we're making. This yeah. isn't something we know, so I suppose that we should point that out. You know, it is the finisher of choice for the Jeskai versions of Nihiri the Harbinger, but uh, you know, maybe the Naya deck is playing just more of a value-oriented game uh -huh. without the sort of big splashy finish. Yeah, that that might be true. But... So, I I can hardly imagine. I would. I would want to play the you spaghetti. Just, you yeah. would just want, yeah, you're, you're hungry. Sometimes you're just hungry for bowl yeah. of spaghetti. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to eat that pastorina. Mm -hmm. Well, but, it's up to Jocelyn now. But now he just drew the Emrakul for this turn. Oh, really? <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, really? It would just be funny. I, I did get I've that. seen that happen. Uh, you've you <laughs> yeah. seen it happen. You, you read, you're already, man, yeah. eight counts on my, on my yeah. uh, Nahiri. Can I, can I smash uh, face, uh, yeah. cook up a nice spaghetti <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> Let me just draw a card no. real quick. Ah! Just forget to draw for a turn. <laughs> oh. Well, then you know, there's there there is the uh, 
the outlet, you discard yeah. it to the Nahiri, do it again next turn, yeah, except no. when you shuffle it back to the yeah. top and draw it again. <laughs> well, that would be pretty sad, yeah. Jocelyn, having a good old think about this, I can yeah. see at least one die is being, going to be taken away. We're going to see something exiled here. Yeah, you see, he's not going for the, for the ultimate, I believe. No. He's just killing the signal pest. Okay. Exile the signal pest now. And I think um, maybe um, Eli missed an opportunity here. Like he should, maybe he, maybe he should have activated the Steel Overseer in his main phase because now um, I thought the token, token actually gets killed off the boat scourge. But and the other thing as well is Eli. I mean, there was no reason not to sacrifice the the Volt scourge to the um, to the Arcbound Ravager there as well. Uh, he, he forgot to... Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, all right. as well. So that's uh, that's unfortunate as well. LA uh, making a couple of unfortunate missteps yeah. here that, you know, by themselves aren't ending the game, no, but well, certainly that, will add up yeah, over time. It adds, it adds up, yeah, absolutely. So impressed by that stabilization play of Jocelyn mm -hmm. there. The, the Nahiri into the Blood Moon mm -hmm. just meant that uh, it was it's kind of lights out for, for Eli, or at least the lights have been dimmed yeah. so considerably. Well, I mean, he still has two more turns with his uh, Arthur tokens, but there's also an, another ultimate coming. Yeah, fetch out a Restoration he, Angel. He may mate. not be playing... Um, yeah, I, I mean, I know he's playing Restoration Angel, so that would already be good enough to like buy another... 10 million turns, <laughs> but um, he might actually not be playing Emerald Wood because Emerald would have most likely been lethal. So, Eli draws again. Obviously, uh, Eli's lands are not doing much, thanks to the fact that they're all mountains. We're going to see the uh, yeah. perennial plating jump on over to the, the champion here. And another Thopter is put in the way. And I think he may, may have just drawn... Oh no, he's, he's just sacrificing the, the token to, to kill the Steel Overseer and in response, Eli is activating the Steel Overseer, I believe. Yeah. Uh -huh. Any reason there to force the, the the activation? Wouldn't you just go upstairs? I think I would also just go to the face most likely. Yeah. You can find the standings for round seven currently on the Bazaar of Moxon website, bazaar-of-moxon.com. Here's Steel Overseer number three. And it's back to Jocelyn now. I mean, he has so many blockers that all the round creatures are pretty much yeah. useless draws right now. See, there there's dice being uh, rearranged so you can see the art on the... Uh, the pictures. It's one thing, uh, Patrick Dickman, as a relative newcomer to coverage, that mm -hmm. uh, one skill that you'll uh, hone even further while doing coverage, you'll be, you'll be able to identify cards from just the yeah. tiniest slivers of the... I'm sure you're already very yeah. capable of it, yeah. but uh, geez, you get there, you get very good at uh, picking off uh, tiny, tiny mm -hmm. images of cards. Yeah, no, that's right, but I mean, some, sometimes it's unfair because there's cards that are like, like if they have the same color, they're both like positioned, yeah. like the, the picture's positioned in the middle of the card, mm. it's sometimes tough and you'll be uh, like leading to to the incorrect assumptions, but... Yeah, like uh, yesterday with Cavern of Souls and yeah. Eye of Ugin. Yeah, oh, exactly. Mate. Oh, mate. Here's a uh, Voice of Resurgence getting in once again. Four damage. It's been ch it's been chipping away very, very yeah. consistently. Knocking Eli down to 17. Yeah, he just, uh, Eli just has... Uh, it's done nearly 20 damage. Yeah. So up goes the uh, Steel Overseer. Jocelyn did activate Nahiri, discarded that uh, wooded foothills and drew another card as we saw. There's another ultimate coming, probably. And if you correctly, uh, correctly predicted uh, Restoration Angel coming, yeah. then there's, uh, this game's going to continue for, for even longer, but I think tables have, I mean the tables have turned a long time ago. Yeah, the tables have turned about 720 yeah. degrees by now. Yeah. They've gone round and round and round again. Yeah. In comes the Edge Champion once more. One more game from the Edge Champion here. It's beyond lethal if it get, if it connects, but yeah. uh, Jocelyn also found a spell sky, yeah, which is another blocker. Another blocker. Man, super impressed with Nahiri. We haven't seen a lot of her at the uh, at the standard level, yeah, not but yet. Uh, in modern, jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talked to, this, uh, I talked to Rafa half. about this. Um, problem in, in standard is that it's much harder to, pr to protect uh, your planeswalker 
Yeah. And she's, I think she's better in a deck playing, uh, playing spells. I mean, obviously we see we're seeing the opposite right now. But usually I prefer seeing her in a deck with spells. Yeah. And modern you got path to exile and lightning bolt to protect her, and we don't have those options in standard. All the top to the play for Eli here, as we see another top to being blown up and triggering a. Uh, and, and I don't understand that. That could have been four damage to the yeah. dome. I don't really understand what Jocelyn was uh, attempting I mean, to do there I mean, by maybe, forcing maybe the Maybe he's preparing for um, uh, an alpha strike attack, and maybe uh, he's fetching up Krata Krato Behemoth. Oh yes, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I doubt that it's going to happen, but it would be pretty cool. <laughs> that actually, yeah, that's not the worst. Right in this situation, it certainly would. I mean, be. I mean, it would be way above lethal, even with, with another blocker. Like that would be probably like 200 damage. Discards the uh, second copy of Blood Moon here. Attacks with. The voice of resurgence. So now here now on ten. I wonder, like, if Harry just doesn't have anything to fetch up. Eli doesn't activate the steel overseer again. Oh, that's, I mean, either of at, them. At, at this point, it does not matter that much anymore. But it's still, still it's always frustrating to see. Galvanic um, blast on the spell sky here. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, that might actually oh dear. be lights out. If he does not have a Restoration Angel right away, yeah. um, Eli is going to pick up this game. But, um, I don't get a CSM. Yep, I think that's oh it. Oh dear, he look at it. that. After all of that, a Galvanic Blast he, on the Spell Sky and ending it so the uh, gal, uh, so the champion could get through. That is an unfortunate end yeah. for Jocelyn, who, who dug very deep and fought very hard. Eli, however, timing his moment perfectly to get in finally I mean, the last points of damage. I don't, I don't want to say it, but this might just be um, like a deck building arrow. Because I think, like, the thing I hear you, you, you want at least one big finisher, right? Yeah. And, I mean, he did not discard that Emrakul, so um, maybe he's just not playing Emrakul. Right? Well, we didn't see it, so I don't know exactly how the deck has been built. I mean, maybe this is the way it goes, but, uh, look, I, yeah, I really can't say. I'm really unsure of this. Yeah. So you can see the players here shuffling mm -hmm. up sideboarding and ready to go to game number two in, in just a few moments. Um, We've got a backup match as well. We're going to check in, see if we can uh, see if we can find out what's going on at that table in just a few minutes. Sorry to cut you off, mate. Oh, not a problem. I was just saying that. Um, uh, I mean, Affinity is probably still favored to win game one, mm -hmm. but I think all those like little mistakes they definitely definitely added up and. Um, I think it was, it was quite lucky that uh, that, he, that he got that Galvanic Pass, and I mean, good for him to win that one. But games two and three might be tougher because there's Ancient Crutches and Stony Silence is coming. Or... Uh, but I mean, this this is the nature of the beast, yeah, isn't Absolute, it? We, we've absolutely. talked about Affinity being, you know, one of these game one mm -hmm. decks, much like something like Dredge in yeah. Modern. It's or in Legacy, I should say. It's yeah. it's one of those decks that where you you give up percentage points by uh, by choosing to play it in game number one. Um, well, it, it depends on um, how much cyber head your opponents are bringing, right? Yeah. Like, I've, I've been playing tournaments where um, my opponents simply didn't have much hate for affinity in their sideboards, so my sideboards were sometimes actually better prepared for a certain matchup than my, than my opponent's sideboard was. I mean, if, if I found, like, let's say, a counter for their uh, for their singleton, uh, Stone of Silence, or Shadow Storm, I might have been in a better spot. And, um, we'll have to see exactly what uh, what manner of uh, sideboard hate with uh, you know anything could be mm -hmm. ancient grudges could be shadow storms could be stony silences in the Naya colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of uh, affinity hate in the Naya colors. So personally, I prefer ancient grudge. It's my most favorite one just because um, because of the speed of the format. Because uh, shadow storm, I mean. It's it's a little different with Birth of Paradise and Noble Hierarch because uh, you get a cast Shadow Storm on turn three, but uh, Ancient Grudges is such an effective answer. I mean, the affinity deck is just built all around uh, having a few mana artifacts and um, like you're, you're pumping out a few cheap artifacts, and then you'll be playing one or two, maybe maybe three big cards, and Ancient Grudge just takes care of them, right? You're, you're going to kill the, um, the plating, you're going to kill the uh, Steel Obviously, maybe that's all that the Affinity deck could assemble, and then he's left with a bunch of useless artifacts. Yeah. So, these guys getting ready to go for game two now, after Affinity picking up that one, really, really clutching at straws yeah. to get through there, but the Galvanic Blast was enough at the end of the day to take care of the Spells Guide, so that Edge Champion could get through. We'll see how... Uh, 
this, uh, these things pan out this time around. Jocelyn here does not like the look of that seven. Look at that yeah. slammed back into the deck here. Yeah. Eli's yeah, still maybe, taking his time to draw those cards. Maybe a little bit frustrated about that loss because I, I can say, I, oh, I, yeah. think, oh. I think I certainly would be. So, so Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> yeah. frustrating. What a position to lose in when yeah. you've you you know you've worked, you've dug in deep for, I mean, how many turns was that? And yeah. you, you know, going on 10 yeah, turns. That, that went on for long. I mean, losing a game where you've been um, playing with an active planeswalker for like 10 or 12 turns, yeah. that is just insane. But again, maybe, I mean, it didn't come, I mean, Jocelyn had the option there to activate the uh, activate the Nahiri's mm -hmm. ultimate yeah. again. Yeah. Chose not to, and then lost Absolutely. the next turn. So maybe there was something else. I mean, there's a zero yeah. percent chance I mean, there's no uh, restoration angels there. Yeah, I mean, he certainly should have gone for restoration angel at least because I mean, the affinity deck is playing mountain. Yeah. And if you see that like actual mountain alongside the, the blood moon cards. Bird and Forge uh, Tenry. Yeah. Forge Tenry. Probably against the Gavanic Ross. Yeah. Not a cyber card that I like against Affinity, though. Like, I mean, it, it does also take care of Whip Flare. But uh, what I was about to say is when you see that mountain, you'll know that they play a lot of Gavanic Ross, yeah. maybe the full set. So I think you should have gone for the a Restoration Angel at least. Here we see one of the characteristically blistering yeah. starts from Affinity with five cards on the table on turn number one. Double Ornithopter Springleaf Drum. Dark Steel Citadel, and of course the Signal Pest at the top of your screen here. But you still need one big card alongside this. Like, if he does play, um, for example, Master of Ethereum, which he probably doesn't play because um, because like of a mountain, like, rather like than mountain yeah. and champion in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he does need some, something like a plating, a steel overseer. Ravager is not too good with, with this particular opening because um, you'll be sacrificing uh, like all the cards that you just played pretty much, and then you have just one four four on board, and that is usually not enough to get the job done. Well, so as it is now, Eli attacking for two. I think he's just tapping mana. We're going to see. Here's, Here's an arc banner Ravager. Okay. Yeah, as I said, and I just mean, an attack for one. I mean, it's gonna be um, a goblin piker when the text. Oh yes. Yeah. A good old goblin piker that, that we've been talking about the yesterday. Piker arena. <laughs> yeah. And it's back to uh, Amodosimo. Okay, it seems like we might have had a uh, I was, I, I mislabeled was, name there. I yeah. was thinking about this for quite some time already because uh, I had in mind that this was not like that. that this person was like. Uh, um, what was the name again? Sorry, it's something with J. But he was sitting in the um, feature match area the last round, ah. and that this was not the same deck. There we go. Of, okay. Uh, it was, I, I've been confused for quite some time. That might explain that little error there, but it looks like his GP champion, Amandosimo, here, playing the Nihilist. Oh, and here is a big card. Yeah, he is a big card. Here is Cranial Plating. Here's the card that I've been talking about. Yeah, the Plating. And I also like that he played the, the Rapture first, because we saw another Affinity player on just drop Plating on turn two getting to attack with it several times uh, that's something that I really don't like like if you play the plating you want to equip it right away and get in there and look at this looks like Dosimon here has missed the uh, second land drop and doesn't have a, th a three drop to play either might be hot sitting uh, behind a Nahiri or something here as this oh no here we go there's Court of Calling it's going to be Court of Calling Court of Calling for one I'm search up a birds or a uh, noble hierarchy well, well, well he, could, he could have this is Court of Calling for two and oh it is of course because the um, uh, the wall of roots counts extra maybe it's not playing a kataki because <laughs> i know for sure that i would have gone for it uh, for a kataki so he's not playing kataki in the sideboard which i really don't like because when i play a court of calling yeah um like a court of calling deck i always want that one of kataki in my side because it's just it's just so good against affinity yeah in situations like this geez what yeah. are, what's the yeah, opponent I mean, what having would to have do? Like, what, what would have happened if, uh, like, six on the upkeep. Yeah, I mean, or seven. Sorry, he, he was tapped out. Like even if he kills, um, kills the Kataki on the upkeep, the, the, the trigger still happens, right? Uh, yeah, I think it just says at the beginning of each upkeep. Um, yeah, but it, this, this it, it has trigger. to survive this whole turn, not each upkeep. No, no. I mean, I mean, at the beginning of that player's upkeep. They pay for all yeah, their artifacts. Yeah, exactly, yeah. but uh, last turn Illy was tapped out, so he could have oh, sure. for it. Yeah, 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 okay. And uh, he also has the very unfortunate to like, protect his attack from a, like a, a gut shot or something, yeah. Um, yeah, very not playing that card, so... No, it's a Kasali Pride Mage instead, the, the uh, Vindicate on legs here. Yeah. But uh, no, that would have been, yeah, that would have been something else. Mm -hmm. That and, could have been truly brutal. And it might just not, not be enough, because uh, with, with Aqua Ravager also being in there, he might, he might be pushing for lethal this turn. I mean, it, I, I don't know if he just like, wants to go for it, like, 
right now because he's playing against a lot of cards. But it is certainly a possibility. Bolt's good. I mean, to be honest, I probably wouldn't go. I mean, I think you're attacking for lethal in the air next turn anyway. So, so here are these uh, evasive attackers, the double ornithopter. And we're going to see the cranial plating blown up by the Sally Pride Mage. No surprises there. So just an attack for two now. And Eli remembers to right, sacrifice yes. uh, the plating into Strong. the Archon Ramager. Strong play. I mean, he's he's been navigating game too nicely. Like, uh, I like the game too so far. There were yeah. um, there were a lot of hiccups in game one that I would that I wouldn't like agree with, but uh, game two has been looking quite good so far. Everything fine. Like, it's panning out a little bit, a uh, little bit better here. Mm -hmm. But not for Dossimon, who still can't find yeah. his third land. Let's hope for him that he does have something like Trippy Corrosion available. Yeah. If he does not run, he's got to be sitting on a big. He's got to be sitting on a big I fortress. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't see him coming back from this. Like, well, what kind of hand? What kind of hand do you keep that has two lands and and no business? Well, he was keeping the water fruits, and maybe yeah. maybe he was opting for like uh, the like but this, the this, top of his deck. This is what I'm saying. He has to have yeah. something yeah. in hand. Absolutely. He has to have a four drop in hand that that is uh, that that warranted yeah. that. Yeah. Keep. But if it's, if it is Nahiri, for example, yeah, he's just gonna play that and roll over and die. Of course, it's not good enough anymore. Yeah, creep corrosion or a. Uh... I mean, Nahiri is not that great against the fifty anyway. Because there's no. just so many attackers, right? I mean, if if it is the time of life, that's fantastic. But Infinity is gonna gonna eat an only after that is being sacrificed into an Aqua Yeah, not, not so. Uh, it's not, not, not so that super. great. <laughs> so Dosimon now with four mana. into the tank but doesn't have uh, so wouldn't be able to cast shatter storm yeah, but, but could well, cast creeping he, 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 uh, he, he doesn't have shatter storm for sure because he just fetched using iron mesa and he got the mountain yeah and, oh never mind it would have been his only red source never mind i'm, I'm silly uh, he there was no way that he could fetch up two red uh, two red sources with just one iron mesa and it's cunning spark mage so cunning spark mage here it's got haste Mm -hmm. And you can tap it, it's a 1-1, one, one. you can tap it to do uh, 1 damage yeah. to a, a creature or a player. little Timmy, of haste. But uh, again, not uh, not going to be the most hugely impactful card here, given that it can only uh, blast one thing at the moment. If, if he's holding a path to exile, that might, um, okay. might, might be enough to get him back into this game. But now we got a stew round. I mean, there's still an Aqua Ravager that is um, a must block threat. Uh -huh. And so he's gonna start uh, like falling further behind in cards. But I mean, there's I mean, there's two cards that Cunning Spark Mage can can kill, which is uh, Signal Pest and Bolt Scourge. And at the moment, the Signal Pest represents more damage. Yeah, I will I will also kill Signal Pest in this, in this po uh, at this point. But then you will be, uh, will be jump blocking the um, Ravager from there on. Yeah. It looks like we're getting a uh, an oracle reading yeah. of the uh, of the card scene. It looks like it's in. Uh, I'm not sure if that's Japanese, Chinese, or Korean mm -hmm. down there. Yeah. One of them. Yeah, but, but you correctly. Uh, oh mate. Told us what it, what Don't it does. Worry yeah. 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 Don't even worry Fun about it. Don't even worry about it. I've had that cast ca that card cast against me so many times in uh, <laughs> yeah. in, in mental magic no, by. <laughs> I, I thought it, I thought you'd say Zeneca stand. No, no, in mental magic by bloody Yol Larson. I don't need to remember what uh, <laughs> what it does because he explains it every time. Yeah. Cutting down all of my uh, carefully crafted board states, oh, so it does sorry. kill the uh, does kill the signal pest here. As we move over to Eli now, Eli remembering to sacrifice it to mm -hmm. the Arcbound Ravager. Well, there's a, now the Crania plating, oh, and that dear. is a two leaf of threats now. And um, this should this, this, yeah, this should just be it. I mean, yeah. is there a path to exile? Probably not. No, there is not. Lightning the Helix. Helix and the re there's the Restoration Angel that uh, Dossimon needed last game. So, unfortunate for Dossimon here, especially in game one. I feel like he had a little yeah. bit more game to offer, but... I, I, uh, I think he had it. Like, yeah. I, I think he threw it away. Yeah, I, I agree, actually. I think that uh, it's unfortunate to say that, but mm -hmm. I think uh, ultimating the Nahiri, yeah. getting the Restoration yeah, Angel, absolutely. flickering the dead parents, that would have been the way to go, but uh, unfortunately, threw away game number one, and now in game number two, overrun by a really good start. Yeah, from the that, was, that was, I mean... It was well played by like the second game was was correctly played and i like that first game some hiccups and 
I've, I've said it earlier, but I, I think it's a deck construction mistake to not be running Emerald Call in your uh, in your Nahiri deck. Okay. All right. Well, that's the way it goes. There, we've got a uh, a view of the uh, of the players down in the feature match area. We're trying to figure out whether we've got a game uh, on table number two to show, and uh, we're still we're still uh, investigating that. Looks like I think they might be sideboarding there. Might still be in between games there, or maybe they're just about to begin. Maybe I think we've got actually got a mulligan mulligan going on on the left hand side. But you can see, poor old Armando Simon, he's gone down in straight sets to Affinity, and he's not happy about that. But uh, his opponent there, with playing Affinity, lives to fight another day, and we'll see him mm -hmm. once again as we begin uh, round number eight before very much longer. He should be in top eight, shouldn't he be? At this stage, was it under for X and O? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, didn't see the records actually, so it could be the case. Looks like we are going to have more magic on table number two, so we can head over there and see what's going on with these guys. Looks like they're getting underway with uh, a post side off with a uh, couple of fetch lands here. This looks like Infect maybe? Or might, I, I mean it's tough to say after just one uh, one land being played. Yeah, there's a panel Haven. This is, yeah, is this Infect. There we go. Yeah, Breeding Pool's going to be that. Yeah. Maybe a Scape Shift deck as well with a Breeding Pool, but yeah, not, well, after you, not after you've seen yeah. the Nexus play. Jocelyn Huilon here. Windswept Heath for him. And Kwasi with no play as well on turn yeah. two, so a very slow start for Infect. Yeah, no Glister Elf, no Blighted Agent. I mean, it's always tough to be like to make mulligan decisions with Infect. Yeah. Um, because like uh, I was talking about this uh, with Rafa. Like you need spells, you need creatures, and you need lands. And um, like the, the less cards you have to work with, of course, the less likely it is that you will be having all three of these. So, yeah, I've read. I, oh, I can't remember who it was. Uh, one of one of the American pros uh, wrote an article about uh, his experiences with. Um, with the Infect deck and had a hard and fast rule that would mulligan any hand that didn't have an Infect creature. Yep. Well, I think that might be Tom Ross because he's been, play uh, he's been playing the deck so much, yeah. but uh, that's just a blind guess. Okay. So Jocelyn here now with the Temple Garden and a, and a Ghost, Ghost quarter. quarter. That's going to be a nice answer to the Ink Moth Nexus eventually. Mm -hmm. So often very difficult to kill the uh, Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah. Between obviously sorcery speed well, removal being no good, and at then... least if you're not playing red. But I mean, even if you are, yeah, due to all the pump spells, due right? to the, not just the pump spells, but Apostle's blessing, mm -hmm. due to binds of Vastwood, all of these things come to come into play. Mm -hmm. So hard to kill it. Well, so Ghost Quarter um, is a nice. Binds of Vastwood also work on uh, Ghost Quarter, though, right? I don't think it does. Does it not? I know it does. Sorry, yeah. Apostle's blessing doesn't work, yeah. but binds of Vastwood yeah. would. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I think I would have played that. No, no, second. Vines of Us would just if you don't activate it. If you, so, they go to activate it, and in ah, yeah. response, you kill it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you can activate it one more time, like in response. Assuming they have yeah. the mana, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I think you play the second Ink of Nexus in this spot, because there's still a Ghost Quarter on uh, Hope for for, for uh, Kirill's for, uh, sake. I hope that he's not attempting to pump that, uh, that Ink of Nexus, because there is. Okay, so really tempting fate here with Jocelyn with the Ghost Quarter on the on the board, and we're going to see here, yeah, just a, a, a nice clean little uh, little yeah. one for one interaction there. Usually Ghost Quarter, you're giving up yeah. the uh, the extra basic yeah. land, but here uh, at the moment, uh, obviously breaking even on cards. I think I would have played Ink Moth Nexus. I mean, you want to start attack for infect uh, for, for poison damage soon. And I mean, I also saw a path to exile in uh, Tuzulin's hand, uh, but I think he's pretty pretty happy to use his ghost core like that. Yeah. He got rid of a pump spell, and he got a, got rid of the ink of Nexus. That's yeah, that's a great deal. It's pretty nice. Quilon now. And also, Jocelyn is playing the Naya Midrange deck that we saw last round. Like, I'm pretty sure that that's him because he had the Avon Mind Sender yeah. several times, and yeah. Yeah. So it looks like we may have messed up the uh, the name Arenos on that. So he's a Glistener Elf. And I think it is a Dissortion Strike and a Becoming Man's and what is the last card in Kuru's hand? Pen yeah, but there's one more that, that I'm ah. having trouble to make out. Uh, um, Jocelyn happily ripping lands yeah. here, so he's going to be able to keep the wheels rolling. Here's a Windswept Heath. So Path to Exile, Haven Mind Sensor and one more card hiding out in Jocelyn's hand here. Cyril on the other hand. Um, path to Exile in his hand too. No, no the Coming Men's, sorry. Yeah, the Coming Men's and uh, the Sword and Strike and some cards that I can't quite make out. Pendlehaven amongst them, there yeah. it is. 
and uh, he'll be attacking for a lot of infect damage soon. Like um, the coast is almost clear. There's just yeah, there's only the path to strike. exile. So distortion strike. And I, I think you might you, you might he almost has to use path to exile on this. I think it's might of a crozer at the back, and we're going to see it here. All right. I know. That, I think you can't go all in like that. Like that would be really, really greedy, right? Okay. Like, I would just be waiting for. Uh, I mean, Trusin is not. Nexus. I think he's not presenting any, any, like any threat right now. There's distortion strike, but makes a creature unblockable and gives a plus one plus zero. Has rebound as well, so gets some extra de extra uh, value out of it coming back round. And uh, yeah, I think he's. Like thinking about using that might of a crozo or not, but that I, is I certainly ooh, don't like it. The like, green. Okay, yeah, in for three. He's, he's not doing it. Okay. I mean he still has the Pandora Haven to um, to pump up his his um Ink Moth Nexus. Excuse me. That's you. <laughs> oh mate, got the sneezies. <laughs> Here's a forest now if he's just lean out of that windswept heath. So He's facing three infect at this stage, and that could have that can go up to four at a moment's no, mo moment's notice. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, uh, but he does not really have any play here. Like he, 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 he technically can play the uh, Dave Mans Mind Sander, but he's just gonna throw away it for free. And apparently that's exactly what he's doing. Okay. If he just activates a pendle, yeah. Ink of Nexus is gonna be a two free. Yes, and uh, Cyril doesn't fail to spot that interaction and is going to pump it up. So the uh, Avon Mind Sensor. Also, did he just did he, did he just uh, miss lethal infect damage? Because uh, that is yeah, I think he just missed lethal because okay. you can you can also just play the uh, Might of Crosser for plus two plus two as an instant at instant speed. Okay. That would make the elf for free. And then you have enough cards in your graveyard to play the Becoming Men's. Who doesn't have enough? Oh, instead of activating the Pendlehaven. Yeah, instead yeah. of activating the Pendlehaven. Um, one, two, three, four. Oh, I think he, I think he has only four cards in his graveyard right now. So that that line is off the table. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was uh, four already. Plus one with the Might of Old Crozer. Yeah, it is. He plays it. Plays the Might of Old Crozer. Are those two of those cards exiled? No. Yes. Apparently so. Uh, oh, one of the uh, the. Uh, he he used scavenging use maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. He used scavenging use in the main phase. Yeah right. Uh, all right no. Well that yeah. would explain that. It no, it no because been they haven't been used. They're, they're... Okay, scavenging use has yeah. just been used now. Yeah. Uh, okay yeah no I think I may may have missed it there. Mm -hmm. May have missed a chance to uh, put the final nail in the coffin here. Yeah he, he missed it. Like, yeah uh, definitely. Uh, I thought I miscounted for a second when I, at first I, I thought I was Mate. right, then I thought I miscounted, but now I know I'm. Now right. you back, you, but you got back <laughs> yourself. Got back yourself. Yeah. Okay, here is a Might of Old Crozer, I think. No, once again it's the Ink Moth Nexus. And I think he's still gonna, just gonna punch for lethal this turn. Jocelyn's already taken two, so only a further eight needed here. I think that, that Mulligan really hurt Jocelyn because uh, he's, he's not been working with a lot. He's might have old Crozer. So plus four, plus four on the Ink Moth Nexus. It's now 5-5. Five, five. So no, no of his, no, uh, none of his creatures can be pumped by Pendlehaven this turn. No, because of the... Yeah, uh, one is 2-1, and one, the other one is 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, so Fossey could have Yeah, you have to do it that. before you use Pump Spells. Done that as well, so yeah. So we're taking for seven here, yeah, and it's another Path to Exile. Well, it's Path to Exile the first, sorry, yeah. we haven't seen that uh, that cast yet. Is there a protection spell? Um, I don't think so, but I don't think that it matters anyway, because there's still the Becoming Mans to make the, the, the Elf lethal. So the Elf at the moment is a 2-1 two, a two unblockable. It's going to be Breeding Pool. In fact, plays two forests. Man, you just know it all. No, I just know it all. I don't know it all, but I've, just, I've, been, all. I've been playing most of these decks. <laughs> and here has become immense on the elf. Going to make it a uh, eight and an eight, eight seven. Eight, eight seven unlockable. Track. And that's enough to do it. Yeah. There you go, Jocelyn Huillon going down in two one to Cyril Foisy here with Infect. And uh, after missing the onboard kill uh, yeah. a turn earlier, certainly didn't miss it the yeah. second time around. And a very convincing end for him.
So, with five wins to his name, a sixth now, he'll be moving on to a, uh, hoping to secure a top eight berth for himself. So we bring it back to the booth, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Dickman, along with Riley Knight, the modern master here. We've seen, uh, well, all sorts of decks in the feature match yep. area. We saw uh, Infect again, we saw Affinity, we saw this Naya mm -hmm. deck. And two Naya decks, uh, well, the two, yeah, two separate Naya decks. That's right. And uh, certainly, it's good to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. The you think that with the the Harbinger, got to have Emrakul as well. I think so. Like, I mean, we just saw in game one. I mean, I mean, I think it could have won without Emrakul, but mm -hmm. Emrakul would have made it way easier. And I mean, there's other decks that are like not attacking you as much as Affinity. And against those decks, you definitely want Emrakul yeah. because they'll have some trouble removing Nahiri. Nahiri is very hard to remove. A Planeswalker is, at four mana is very hard to remove. Yeah. Mana, right? So you, you might oftentimes end up in a board state where you'll just be like, tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up, Emrakul GG. And I mean, I would always want that option in my deck. Yeah, that's how it goes. It is a nice, clean, clean, nice, clean finish. So. Given the fact that we don't have very much time left in this round, we ask you to stick around, bear with us, because our uh, our next round will be upon us before you know it, my friends. Uh, the other, the final match lifts are being submitted, and we'll be back with our next round in just a few moments. So stick tight, hold on to your hats, and we'll be back before very much longer with more modern action. Bazaar of Mox in Strasbourg. It's been a great pleasure to have your company, and of course, don't go anywhere because we will be right back at you, Cleopatra, before very much longer. Patrick Dickman, Riley Knight, we'll see you again back here in, in Strasbourg very soon.